Welcome. In today's video, we're doing the two year overland rig update on the Jeep Cherokee. I'm going to go through all of our shower setup, our tent setup, all of the gear we take on trips, all of the upgrades that we have done to the XJ and our camera gear. So let's get into it. A lot of things have changed on the Cherokee and our gear in the past two years since I filmed the first video. So if you haven't watched that first video yet, after this video, go and watch that one. I will have a link to it down in the description. So as you can see, we still have the Trailhead Rooftop Tent by Tough Stuff Overland. It's been great to us. I've kept it maintained and have taken care of it, and it's taken care of us through all of our adventures. So that is still our tent option at the moment. And let's get inside and I'll show you everything we keep in it. Crawling up inside the tent, as you can see, we still have the two wool blankets and the sleeping bag, but we did add a couple small camp pillows and the air mattress. This air mattress plus the three inch foam pad in the, in the tent is more than enough for me and Natalie since we're side sleepers. And for every season other than winter, this is usually the gear we take. And then for winter time, we'll bring a couple more wool blankets and some thick, warm sleeping bags to keep us warm in those winter nights. So now that I've shown you the inside of the tent and the gear that we have in there, I wanna show you everything we keep in the shower room for our shower setup. Now walking over to the passenger side of the Jeep, here is our shower setup. This is the Taruka USA shower awning. And me and Natalie keep our shower setup fairly simple. We just bring two large quick drying microfiber towels and travel size bottles of body wash, shampoo, and face wash. So to help save the space, we also have something on the inside that helps us with our showers. So let me show you. Now stepping inside here is the shower itself. We use the Helio LX by Nemo. It has a five gallon capacity and a six or seven foot long uh, hose that goes to a shower head. It's worked great for us over the past few years and it also has a foot pump. So you could keep great pressure with it. And I've also poured boiling hot water in here along with cool water. So we have nice and warm showers. All right, now that I've gone completely over our shower setup, let's get into the lights, the chairs, and the tables we bring on our overland adventures. Now walking around the front side of the Jeep, as you can see, this table and these chairs have been with us since the beginning. And honestly, they check all the boxes for us. They're lightweight. They don't take up a lot of space in the back of the Jeep. They do everything we need at camp and on the trail, and they're budget friendly because we're not trying to keep up with the Joneses with any of our gear. We're just trying to see cool stuff on a budget. But we do have an awesome table over here that we have picked up and I'll show you guys. Now over here is one of my favorite pieces of gear that we've added to our camp kit. It is the tailgater tire table. We have the silver aluminum version to keep up with the lightweight in the back of the Jeep so we're not extremely heavy going down the road or the trail. And we also have Dometic water jugs. These are three gallon water jugs and we have one for our drinking water and then one for dishes and washing our hands. Along with our Covea single burner stove. This is more than enough for any of the meals we make at camp because we're not trying to be too extravagant with our meals. We're just trying to make something simple since, you know, we're overlanding. We don't want a majority of our time to be washing dishes and cooking. We want to be at drinking trail sodas around the fire with friends. And as you can see, our camp tote is a lot smaller because usually the gear we keep in there, if I don't use it on, you know, two or three camp trips in a row, we remove it to keep with the lightweight and the space savings in the back of the Jeep. So gone over my favorite piece of gear and some of our newer pieces that we've added in. So let's get into our camp lighting and then we'll move into our solar and all of the Jeep upgrades. 
Now over here is my favorite camp lights. These are the Devos Outdoor Light Rangers. We bought the double version with the solar panels and these things are awesome. You know, lighting up camp since we're in Arizona and we have fire bands during the summer. These things are great for lighting up the entire camp and keeping the bugs away from us. Or we keep one of them on all night on the lowest setting if we're alone to help light up camp so you're not fumbling with a headlamp or tripping over stuff in your camp if you need to go pee. So these are a great option for us and we've used the crap out of them. But now, gone over these, let's get into the solar setup. All right, and over here is our solar setup. This is the Devos Outdoor 100 watt solar panel that folds up. It's nice and compact in the back of the Jeep along with our budget charge controller setup. It's just a quick wire connection that runs to our charge controller and then to some alligator clamps on our auxiliary battery. And since I've gone over this, let's get into the solar charger setup and battery setup underneath the hood and get into the details of all that. We have a lot to get into underneath the hood. So let's start off with the dual battery setup. As you can see, here is the auxiliary battery. I had more than enough room here because I installed the Thor cowl intake and that thing has been great for us so far. But it opened up a lot of room to move the auxiliary battery setup from behind the passenger seat in that wood box to up here underneath the hood to give us more space in the back of the Jeep. But I just took a steel battery box, welded some legs onto it and bolted it in place and it's been great for us. But I will get into depth on what we do have for, you know, the rest of our power setup. I do have another steel battery uh, box right here for our Red Top Optima, our starter battery. And I did do the K suspension battery cable and wiring upgrade. So we have more than enough power running from our high output alternator that I also got from K suspension. Uh, you did have, you do have to modify the bracket a little bit for that, but it's no big deal. It's uh, a lot more output than the stock alternator, which is more than enough to charge everything and run everything that we take on our trips. But I have a thick battery cable running from the positive of the starter battery to the Blue Sea Systems SIACR. This is a automatic charging relay so once it detects the right voltage coming from the alternator it automatically connects and runs on over through i think i got uh zero gauge wiring or one one gauge wiring uh, just some welding wire that i ran around and to the auxiliary battery so while we're on the trail or driving to the trail it's automatically connected and running all of our devices or charging anything we need to the auxiliary battery. And then from there, I just have the alligator clip set up running to our budget charge controller and to our 100 watt Devos panel. So we've had zero issues with this setup for a while now, quite a few years as you guys have seen from our previous videos. This is our whole setup underneath the hood. But the whole reason we have this is for our switch panels in the back of the Jeep. So let's go back there and I'll show you those. So running from the battery underneath the hood, we have two Blue Sea Systems 12 volt panels. This panel on the driver's side is switched. So this doesn't just keep uh, drawing battery power while we are not using the Jeep, but it goes to a 12 volt plug, a dual USB charger, and then as you can see, a voltmeter so we could see the health of the battery while it's hooked up to solar or while we're driving and on the passenger side we have the same setup but minus the voltmeter so it has a single 12 volt plug right here and a dual USB to keep our cameras or any of our stuff charging and another couple pieces of gear that we have as you could see we have the hot logic hot plate this thing is awesome our main use for this is on our way to the trail or while we're on the trail for the day, we'll put some pre-cooked food in here because this is pretty much a hot plate just to warm up the food. So if we're on the trail for a couple hours, 
we'll throw some food in here shut this and we'll just plug it in and it automatically runs so this is a cheap piece of gear that's great it warms up your food while you're on the trail so once you get back from your trail run or from whatever you're checking out for the day or your drive itself your food will be nice and hot so you don't have to worry about cooking you know that day and uh, you could just relax and drink some trail sodas while your food's cooking and moving over from the hot logic here is our new fridge this guy is tiny it's only big enough once I get it open for you guys uh, it is large enough to put a 12 pack of trail sodas on the inside so it's extremely small but what I love about it is compared to the Dometic it takes up next to no room in the back of the Jeep so this thing is great for overnighters or weekend trips if you plan out your food and your drinks you know in a really sparingly manner or in a compact way so this thing is great it doesn't use a lot of power and it does have a USB plug on the front and it does have a app for the phone and it's very budget friendly with the case so we've been using this lately just to help save on space and weight in the back of the Jeep and we're gonna keep the Dometic for the square body overlander build or for longer, you know, week long overlanding trips in the Jeep. All right, moving away from our battery setup, let's get into the cooling system. I have a three row all aluminum radiator. I have a 195 degree thermostat with the HESCO high flow thermostat housing and the flow cooler high flow water pump. With the those three things all working together and replacing my exhaust manifold because the crack in the manifold was actually blowing exhaust heat and gas onto the block which kept my coolant temperatures a little higher than I liked so with these three things working together it's been amazing during the summer you know it's 110 outside this thing runs at 200 205 and 210 climbing hills so all of these upgrades have been great and you know I've practically upgraded the cooling system as much as humanly possible but moving on from here let's get into our switch setup for all of our accessories and then we'll go underneath the Jeep and get into the drivetrain and the axles as you can see here is the switch panel location I took out the ashtray I do have the amber on there is my chase light on the Smitty built rear bumper the fan is my auxiliary transmission cooler that I'll show you guys. The grill is the front pods on the front bumper. And then the light bar and the roof on the upper right side is for the pods on the roof rack. This is an awesome location. It hasn't gotten in our way and it's actually worked out pretty well for us. And while we're inside the Jeep, let's get into the details of this thing. I do have dual PRP seats on the XJ seat brackets. I designed this one how I wanted and Natalie designed that one how she wanted. And they've been great for us. What I really like about them is since they're bucket seats, it holds you really tight. So if you're without your seatbelt and going down the trail, it's practically like you're wearing a seatbelt, which is awesome. Then moving down here, I do, let me get my holster out of the way. I do have a vinyl floor in this thing. Uh, I picked up a vinyl floor kit and I did do design engineering insulation underneath. And then I did sound deadener underneath that just to help with the heat radiating through the floor during the summer. And it's been great for us since the AC has been working. And right here, I do have the TNM metal fab accessory plate. This thing's awesome. It bolts where your gear shifter is underneath your center console, and I use it for my Second Amendment protection item. So this thing's been great for us. And now moving from that, let's get into the drivetrain and everything I've done underneath the Jeep. So moving underneath the Jeep, I am on six inches of lift, and these are the Metal Cloak dual rate front coils with the Metal Cloak brake lines. And my shocks are the Reservoir fox shocks and they've been great for us so far the steering is the cav fab one ton crossover steering and we've had zero issues with it so far and the track bar is the cav fab under the axle track bar with the rubicon express heavy duty track bar bracket for the body 
Then from there, I have the Iron Rock 3-Link Rock Link lift uh, long arm kit. It's been awesome for us so far with zero issues on this six inches of lift. And then with the axle itself, I have the Solid Industries diff cover with the 488 gears from Yukon. And I have a lock right locker in the front that goes out to the chromoly shafts. So that is the whole front axle setup. So let's move to the back. Oh, and I have a Fox steering stabilizer to match the shocks. All right, moving to the rear, I did do the Ford 8.8 axle swap for us. And I do have a Spartan locker in the rear with 488 gears, obviously. And I have the Barnes four wheel drive truss on there with the Stinky Fab Racing high clearance shock mounts to make up for the six inches of lift in the rear. And my leaf springs are the three and a half inch Old Man Emu leaf pack going to the Stinky Fab Racing adjustable um, shackles. The shackles have been great for us, zero issues. They're extremely beefy and overkill, which is awesome. And then we've had zero issues with the leaf so far with all of the weight we've had in the Jeep. All right, getting underneath here, we do have the NP231 transfer case with the slip yoke eliminator. And we have front and rear Adams drive shafts. As you can see, that uh, transmission mount is the DB Metalworks uh, heavy duty transmission mount. Had zero issues with it so far. And our motor mounts are the same exact company. Forgot to tell you guys, but we also have disc brakes front and rear. And we have the Black Magic brake pads with the centric rotors from blackmagicbrakes.com. And they've been great for uh, keeping this heavy Jeep uh, slowed down on the trail and on the highway. I almost forgot, but I do have unibody stiffeners from front to rear on this thing. Starting in the front, the outer ones are DB Metalworks 316 steel unibody stiffeners, and then I have TNM Metal Fab steering box inner stiffeners for both sides of this thing. Then the center is Rough Stuff Specialty stiffeners. And moving to the rear, the outer ones are DB Metalworks stiffeners, and then I have inner rear unibody stiffeners from TNM Metal Fab. So I try to make this thing as rigid as possible so we have zero issues while off-road and getting flexy. Also thinking about it, I do have louvers in the hood to help keep this thing cool, along with hood spacers. Both of those have worked great. I might actually remove the hood spacers for winter time, so this thing could actually get up to operating temperature. And then my roof rack is custom. I built that completely by myself with K suspension gutter brackets and just some steel square tubing that I bought locally with some 3 16 flat bar for the light mounts. And then I did do quick disconnects for the rooftop tent onto the roof rack itself because of the clearances of the roof rack and how the tent was. I had to almost completely unbolt the roof rack and tilt it just so I could get to the bolts for the tent. So I figured I'll make some quick disconnects. It only raised the tent about three, three and a half inches at the most, but it will be a lot easier to remove the tent for our rock crawling trips. I've gone over the unibody stiffeners and thinking about it, I have not told you about the tires. We have 35 by 12 and a half, 15 inch BFG KM3s. We have five of them, so I do five tire rotations on the practically original steel wheels that I bought a long time ago when I very first lifted this thing. The steel wheels, they're 15s by 10 inches wide. They're five by four and a half bolt pattern. So standard XJ bolt pattern. And they are a negative four inch offset. So they look really wide like we run wheel spacers, but we don't do that. So going over the tires and wheels, Oh, I, I forgot the, the front bumper is a Smitty Bill XRC front bumper that matches the rear. It's I've had it practically since I've owned the Jeep and it has a 9,500 pound Smitty Bill XRC winch with the Factor 55 Pro Link thimble type thing that it makes it safer to winch people out and to winch ourselves out. But thinking about it, 
I've kind of gone over everything that I can remember when it comes to the Jeep. If you guys do have any questions about anything on the Jeep, any of our gear, how we plan trips, anything I've done to the Jeep in general, comment down below. And if I don't have a video to it that I can link you to, I will describe it or answer your question for you down in the comments. And I really appreciate you guys watching. It means a lot to us. And I can't wait to see you guys in the next video. Bye, you guys.